Going on, man. Good morning, everybody. Another movie Monday. We're about to get ready to hit the show store. Y'all disregard my belly. Ah. We just had that Super Bowl last night. Look at this go. Yeah, make sure y'all go ahead and tune in to 102.5. Y'all can already get in the car, man. Go ahead and get on the radio. Listen to me. If y'all already tuned in, why y'all waiting on me to get started? Make sure y'all go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Go to Moody What's Here. Go to 102.5. KLLK 102.5. Yo, 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 y'all know what it is, man, it's the boy, the kid, the kid, the boy, the one, and only the G-O-A-T, the M, the O, the O, the D, the Y, the O, the O, the O is Moody, Monday is Moody, yeah, and we back in the building, man, for another Moody Monday, man, it's another great Monday, per usual, man, I'm happy to be in the building today, we got a lot to talk about, we got, and we got a lot of things we need to go ahead and address. The first thing, let's go ahead and talk about the Super Bowl. That's what everybody's going to be talking about at work today. First of all, what a great game, right? You know, man, so dope. So everything was back to back to back, man. Hurts, Mahomes, they were both doing their thing out there last night. And then it came down to 
one play, and that thing pretty much determined. I mean, it went on pretty much and determined the outcome of the game. And it was 35-35 going in those last couple minutes of the um, fourth quarter, and we got that holding call, and that was it. I mean, a great game determined by a call. And, you know, that's something that you know. I mean. I'm a little soft about it. You know, I didn't necessarily have no no hat in the fire when it came to who I just wanted to win, but I didn't want it to, like, end that way. Come on now. I mean, it was such a great grain up until that point, but like I said, it was left into the hands of the real. And it got, you know, whatever. You know, that's why they always be talking about, like, the NFL rigs or something like that, because stuff like that, you know. I, I mean, and maybe I'm being biased because I'm a defensive guy. I'm, I was a cornerback. So maybe it's one of those things where I'm, you know, was he holding? Was he not? I mean, it wasn't enough to, like, he didn't pull his jersey off or nothing like that, even if he did. So, I mean, that's something that they could at least definitely slide. But whatever, nonetheless, you know, it's another Super Bowl, another controversy, another, you know, what if kind of situation. We're always wondering kind of what that may look like. But also, before I could get any other, talking about greatness, talking about Super Bowl, Today is February the 13th, man, and we have, like I said, it's on the Moody Monday. And it's a particularly special Moody Monday because it is King Moody's birthday, man. I want to give a shout out to my son, man. He's celebrating his seventh birthday today. I hope you listen to me, son. I know you're doing great out there. Go to school. Be great. Be company like I always tell you to do. And make sure you speak up for yourself at all times. So I just want to tell everybody, if y'all see him in the hallway, y'all make sure y'all show my boy some love, man. Happy birthday, King Moody from Dad. Speaking of being a dad, speaking of parents, Rihanna, right? Rihanna out there, she did it again, and I, she, 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 she didn't got pregnant, <laughs> as they would say. You know, she, they was somebody. I was dreaming about fish the other night, so I knew it had to be somebody. So, and, and Rihanna is out there. Like I said, that was one of the biggest headlines. A lot of people uh, that kind of took over the Super Bowl game, which is pretty usual. I mean, we already knew most of the people. A lot of people were waiting on the halftime show anyway. A lot of people was kind of confused that there was a football going on during Rihanna's concert, but nonetheless, man, shout out to uh, Rihanna. Congratulations on her and her pregnancy, and like I said, you know, I feel like she killed it. You know, I hadn't seen nobody floating in the air like that. You know, a lot of people just wanted to talk about the pregnancy, but I was legit, um, I was like impressed by that whole performance, yo. And like I said, you know, a lot of people are disappointed that we probably not gonna get that another album, and Guys, it just is what it is. We just gotta, you know, you know, live in the moment, be present. She, she had her time, you know, she not, you know, doing it anymore. So, you know, appreciate the album, appreciate the time that she had. A lot of times we don't get things back. Um, a lot of times it's just what it is. It's just what, it was that moment in time. So like moving forward from here, it's just gonna be what it's gonna be, you know, you know. And so we got all those hits that, like I said, that she performed last night to continue to like stay with us. And, you know, maybe we probably not gonna get that second album in. It's okay, you know, some things are just better done on one, you know, at the end of the day, because y'all probably you know criticizing her anyway, if she came back and did a second album, be like, oh, it wasn't like the old Rihanna, and it wasn't this and that no more, and she just lost the stuff, you know, it's what it is, she's still going to be, you know, the truth, she a dog in my opinion, so it's going to be what it is, you know, but nonetheless, that helps me say what it's about I want to talk about today, pretty much kind of like season the moment, and football, all in, all put together. As some of y'all may know, like I said, I used to play football at A State, also known as Arkansas State University. A trash university. Arkansas State University, home of the Red Wolves. And like I said, I played there um, probably, you know, you know what, I'm not going to tell you how long I played it, though, because then I'll be showing my age and I'm trying to stay pristine up behind the mic and on camera. But nonetheless, like I said, I played football. And like I said, after you get done playing football, you know, that was the end of my career once I got done with college. Once you get done playing football, the most question, one of the, the most consistent questions I get asked is like, do I miss it? And I probably can speak for a lot of athletes, football, basketball, baseball, especially the ones who have done it throughout their careers consistently for so long. Uh, man, it's one of those things that we do uh, continue to just, you know, get asked all the time. And for me, honestly, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. It's not necessarily that I like, like, miss the actual football game. Sometimes I do, um, but it's more or less than just, I sometimes miss like kind of what that, that, that lifestyle that came with it. Um, just more or less like just having those moments of opportunity to like be around the guys all the time. Just having those, those moments to be able to like, you know, if I need some anger to release or something like that, or some aggression, I can, you know, I can take it out on the field. And then just also the consistency of the schedule. But one of the things that I also 
um, that kind of sticks with me the most or whatever this for like lessons I learned is that you know you definitely do have to seize the moment. And I can tell you about like the story time. I got like two story times, hope like I have enough time to tell both of them. Um, the first one happens in high school, it's not directly with me. So in high school, my senior year, we were playing in the North Half Championship and you know we were playing this one team called Ray Brooks. And to this day, I, I still just like them. But nothing, whatever. But we were playing North Half Championship, you know. One of my buddies of mine, like I said, we, you know, in, eventually we not we don't win the game, you know. So let's just go ahead and get to that part and get that out of the way. We didn't win. We didn't win and it still hurts to the day. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm sure everybody who went to school with me, played with me, my teammates in high school, we still hate that. We still <laughs> it still touched us a little bit. But anyway, when we get to the locker room, one of my best friends, um, his name is Desmond Jenkins, man, he actually passed away <clears throat> two years ago. But, um and he was in the locker room just like bawling, like crying, 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 well, you know what I'm saying? And one of my other teammates who was happy to be my cousin, he walked over to him and he was like, <clears throat> excuse me, he walked over to him and told him like, you know, man, it's gonna be all right, it's gonna be okay, you know, man, it's, it's, it's all good. And he was like, it won't be all good. He's like, you, or like, he's like, Moody, y'all gonna continue to go on with y'all careers. Y'all gonna continue, y'all gonna get another opportunity to play football. Y'all gonna continue to like, you know, have those chances on field. He was like, that was my last football game, you know. And that was something that like we how when I heard it, you know, I kinda like in that moment didn't like really as absorb it as it was, but it was like one of the things like that is right, you know, he that is his this is his last football game. And you know, he knew that he had such a love for football and then just sitting there knowing that that was his last time that he was gonna be able to step on the field with his boys and everything and what and everything. That, you know, it really hit them in a way that, you know, I felt that it didn't really hit the rest of us until, like, a little bit later. Um, and it was one of the things that in that moment, he knew, like, that was it. And he, like, the whole realization of, like, that moment had passed in his life had really had come to an end and there was nothing else he could do, you know. And fast forward to me, my senior year of college football, and it was the last home game. And that last home game, it was legit like a out-of-body experience. It's like, it didn't hit me until that moment that like, just like dead, I'm like, yo, this is like my last football game, you know? I'm like, it's, this is it after this, you know? So it's like one of those things where I'm in the game where I'm, I'm there, but I'm really not there because all the things that my thoughts are really just kind of like, the emotions are really taking over me so much. I'm gonna tell you how much of a uh, effect it had on me. Up until that point, I had never given up a touchdown. And I'm not talking about like just in college, I'm talking about like, College, no, excuse me. I had given up one touchdown and it was in high school. So junior high, no touchdown, I'm giving up as a cornerback. High school, I only gave up one. That was like a 10 yard slant. And then junior college, I never gave up a touchdown. And then up until my senior year of college at A State, I had never given up a touchdown. And sure enough, that night, this dude threw, and I tell you, this was like a, it was the worst pass ever, yo. And it was like a duck. I mean, it just floated in the air. But I was so not there. Uh, that it just hung in the air and I just like was running past it. It was kind of like, like one of those little cartoon things where they just waiting like one on something to fall out of the sky and you just run in a circle. That's how I basically felt. I felt like I had no way of like just kind of navigating where this ball was going to drop it, even though it was literally coming like right towards me. And I just couldn't, I, I don't know, I just couldn't like comprehend it because my mind was so out of place. And that was the thing that like really hit me when I realized that like, you know, it was my last game. This was the last opportunity that I was going to have to like have these moments on the field. And the difference between, and I know everybody's probably saying, well, you know, that's everything, you know, whether it's basketball, whether it's, you know, football, baseball, whatever the case may be, but it's really not. Because even with basketball, you can still have those moments where you go to a, like a, you know, a gym and you can run five on five with your guys. Even like when it's softball or baseball, you can get onto like the city league and you can play a full on um, baseball game. The thing about football is like you'll never put the pads on, you'll never put the helmet back on, you'll never put the like you might not put the cleats on, but you know you get what I'm saying. It's like you'll never put that body of armor back on again. You know you never. I can't tell you how many times I've never seen walk past like a field and seen a bunch of like people just like padded up, you know, playing a full game, like a legit full game of football. 
And that was the thing about me is like whenever I realized that it was like truly over, like that I would never like put another helmet on. I'd never like put another set of shoulder pads on. Like, you know, yeah, I might like play football, flag football with like a local team, but you know, it's not the same. You know, with basketball and those other sports, tennis, whatever the case may be, golf, every basically every other sport you can go out there and you know, recreate it in like a real life competitive situation. But that's the only thing about football. Once it's done, contact football is like it's done and done. And that was the thing that really um, when people ask me, do I miss it? Is uh, that's really what I miss? I miss that I'm not able to like put the helmet back on. I'm not able to put the, the shoulder pads on. I'm not able to put the arm back on. Cause that's like one of the most powerful feelings that you feel in those times. And you know, you can meet a lot of football players, you know, when they take off their arm and they take away their helmet, you know, you know, a lot of them lose their identity. I can't tell you how many like football players, especially even teammates that I've met that they, when they didn't have that anymore, they can they didn't know who they were without it. You know, they had put so much of their identity into their football. And, to, and not necessarily like I said, a lot of people think it's the football, but it's a lot of times it's their arm. They, they put so much into that, and then when it's taken away, you know, they, they don't know how to recreate it. They look for ways to recreate it, or they kind of hold on to it as long as they can. But a lot of times, you know, it, just, it is it is what it is. You know, a lot of times they don't have they don't give themselves the opportunity to just go through that grieving process, and that's what it is. You know, a lot of times a lot of guys don't even they try not to even grieve. It. Even for me, and I know my brother, uh, he played for the University of Miami, but he changed the team. Doesn't even like he and I. We rarely, rarely, rarely watch football now. Um, I can tell you, I could probably count on my hands. I know I can count on my hands how many times I've been to an Arkansas State University uh, football game, and not because I don't want to go. A lot of times I keep up with the score, want them to do well, but it's just hard going out there and seeing it, and even just seeing somebody else on the um, television just you know playing football. It's just kind of tough, kind of watching them do it. It's not like. A but I know it sounds like I miss it, but it's more or less just um, it's kind of like a reality check, and you learn how to kind of like incorporate football and everything else, all those lessons you learned in football and everything else in your life. And that's what I say, you know, just being able to like seize the moment. One of my most reoccurring dreams that I have is basically is all the money is about football, and I, for the longest I kept trying to figure out like what's the purpose of you know type of deal, you know. Like why I, why do I always keep having these like dreams about football all the time? It was always the football, but I would never get to the game. Uh, a lot of times it would just be leading up to the game, leading up to the game, and like over the years, and that's like a decade type of dream. Is I'll tell you the most consistent dream that I have all the time is going about this, and it's one of those things I started really trying to look at like what is it about? Because I know that I didn't miss football so much that I was just have to be dreaming about it all the time. So that was one thing about it. Cause, you know, at first I was like, well, maybe I miss football so much, but I was like, you know, keeping it real myself. I'm like, I really don't miss it to the extent that I should just be dreaming about it so much over the years. But then I started realizing that it was a pattern to it. I started like putting myself in those moments in those dreams and realizing that leading up to that football game, that was something that the preparation phase, you know, that was something that I was, you know, looking back, I know there was a lot of things that I felt like I did best in, but also just preparing for those opportunities whenever that game comes, that I had to be, you know, in the best shape and the best form of myself. And you got to think football is only 12 games uh, throughout the season. You spend the rest of the 300 and, man, I wish I did that math before I did that, but essentially over 350 plus uh, days, other days, preparing for 12 days. Like really let that sit in, 12 days, out of the whole year, and you spend the rest of the 350 plus days preparing for those 12 days. And that's a lot of things about, like I say, you gotta be able to seize the moment in, cause like those 12 days are really your game days. And life, you know, and throughout this year, like I said, we've been talking about like moving forward when it comes to New Year resolutions and everything with that start. But the, honestly, you're gonna get 12 days probably out of this year to like make the difference in what you wanna see for the rest of your season, in this season of your life. You got 12 days, it's gonna be those moments that you're gonna have to like really not miss a cue, you're gonna have to be on point, every snap gotta be what it's gonna be, every day has gotta be what it's gonna be the best of your ability. But you know, you gotta make sure those other 350 plus days is gonna be those days that you prepare, that you make sure that you're gonna put yourself in the right program, and you put yourself, surround yourself about, around the right people in order to really have the best outcome for those 12 days. So moving forward, for the rest of this year, you know, whether it's once a month 
Or what, don't even think about, you know what, I'm going to take that back. Because just don't even look at it for like a specific once a month type of deal. You'll know when it's game day. You'll feel it and you're going to, that, that electricity will run through your body. You'll see, feel like you'll, you'll know when it's game day. You'll know when it's okay. You'll wake up that day and you'll know it's different. It's going to smell different. You're going to walk different. You're going to have a little bit of swag about yourself that you didn't know. You're going to kind of like strut through like you were having been struggling for the day. And that's when you're going to look into your eyes. You're going to look in the mirror. You're going to say, oh, yeah, it's game day today. It's game day. So that's when you got to get that right music on. You got to get yourself that right pep talk. You got to make sure you tone it in. You got to let everybody know, yo, I can't talk today. I'm locked in. So make sure you, whatever you do, feel that moment. Because then it's going to be undeniable, unmistakable. When you feel that it's game day, you make sure that you locked in, make sure you tune in, and make sure that you know what game plan is, and best make sure that you prepare it. Because like I done told y'all all the time, if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. So you make sure you utilize these other 300 plus days, so when them 12 days do come upon you, you ain't taken off guard, you ain't shook or nothing, you ready to strap up, you ready to put your arm on, you ready to put your chin buck on, because whatever's going to hit you that day ain't going to be nothing compared to all the things and the strides and the inches that you're going to make on that field that day. So make sure at all times that you stay ready you seize the moment and don't let these 300 plus days go by because when that 12 come, y'all going to be ready. Now make sure y'all going to stay ready. I'm going to do whatever I can. Like I always said, you know, whatever my boys can do in order to like increase their, their, their opportunities to their win, I'm going to do what I can. But it's got to really come down to y'all, whoever looking, whoever paying attention, make sure that y'all make sure y'all do what you got to do on your end. Because that feeling of being at the in that locker room, when you know that you it's a wrap, you don't want that. Prolong that career out as long as you can. Keep rolling as long as you can. Keep doing what you got to do. Life comes in quarters. You got one quarter, uh, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. You know, I feel like I'm at a point to where I'm at, you know, going into my second quarter of my life. And that's what I'm going to be at right now. And eventually, you know, God's gonna put you in a situation where you gotta take halftime. And that's the thing, like like don't don't look at halftime as something that, you know, don't discredit it. Don't look at it as a setback. Don't look at it as something slowing you down or something like that. Because that's a lot of times what we do. We sometimes we get in a position of life where we've been going boom, 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 driving down the field. Life been kind of going our way, or it could have been kind of a struggle in the first quarter, but then we get to halftime where ain't nothing going on and we kind of don't know what to do. We just kind of sitting up in our locker, not knowing what we're doing. We just overthinking, thinking about the last play that happened in the first half. We ain't got time for that, though. It's time for you to like go ahead and let that get out your mind. Stop thinking about what happened in the first half. Go ahead and get, get back in the playbook. Go ahead and review film. Go ahead and seek counsel with the people that in your life that coach it. No one's going to be one, so when you get back on the field in that second half, that's going to get you through. So making sure that you're doing what you got to do in halftime. Don't look at it as a time. Don't look at quiet time as a time or not an opportunity. Because that's a lot of time when we see the most growth. We see the most improvement when we have that quiet time. When we just have time. When we get a moment to reflect. When we get a moment to like look back on what we did in our first in the first half. Kind of go over the strategy again. What worked. What didn't work. At the end of the day, I want to see everybody win. I'm going to keep saying it, like Taylor again, he says it all the time. You know, I ain't got to put out your light in order for me to shine. And you make sure you ain't got to put nobody else out. No, nobody else out of light in order for you to shine. We all going to win. We all going to continue to do better. We all going to continue to do our best in everything we do. So just make sure you're stepping up, doing what you got to do, and just understand where you at in the game of life. At the end of the day, it don't have to be a game. Life is life. Be present. Understand those moments we're at. Understand who we're going to be and who we're going to be. And understand, like I said, your position. And like I said, I can't stress this enough. Don't let halftime, don't take halftime for granted at all. Yeah, you might not be moving around like you normally do. You might not be, you know, making moves like you normally, like you normally been. Like I said, halftime is time for you to sit down, adjust, you know, get re reconnected, rehydrate, you know, get ready for that next that, that next task, which you're going to need the energy. So don't feel like you, if you're not doing so much that you, you're stagnant, you're out of place. That ain't the case all the time. But you, only you know. Only you can keep it real with yourself. Only you know if you're, like, really just being lazy, you just sitting around. But if you know that you, you're at a point in your life that, okay, this is halftime. This is halftime. Let me sit down for just a second. Let me recover. Let me recruit. Let me 
get up here and do what I got to do in order to make them the best of our game. You want to talk about halftime and football, give it back football related. Alabama, we already know the history of the Rolling Tide. They are one of the most best halftime adjusting teams that you won't ever see. They could be losing at halftime, at, in the first half of 14, they'll go to halftime, make them adjustments, and they'll come back and put 30, 40 up on you. So don't look this you coming out the gate struggling a little bit on half on the first half. Don't take that as you taking an L. Don't take that as you, you know, losing track of whatever you're doing. Take that time to readjust. You go in there, like I said, some people have that birds out group, just like those coordinate coordinators that be sitting in the sky booth doing the game. They can see the whole field, they can see all the plays. There's somebody in your life that's gonna be your coordinator, they can see the whole field. They're going to help you get through those positions. They're going to help you get through those tough times when it happens like that. So y'all know what it is, man. I'm just letting y'all know. You know what I mean? But, anywho, let me get out of my, my serious voice real quick. I know y'all probably, man, what do we really got? He <laughs> really is going hard about this football stuff. What do we even talk about? I know, I know, I know, man. It is what it is, man. I had to go ahead and get it off my chest and make sure everybody knew what was good, you know. I'm trying to do what I got to do, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm a coordinator in your life. Maybe I'm a coach. I don't know. I, you know, I should really get into, like, Looking at like how to be a life coach or something like that. You know what I mean? Speaking of life coaches, man, shout out to TP, also known as Tyler Jackson, man. She always holding it down for the 102.5 KLKLEK FM family, man. She also always holding it down for the movie with your brand, man. So many people, man, always showing love to Shay. She's always holding it down for sure. And I don't know, y'all probably know Shay. I, don't know. I didn't want to mess up last night. In my mind, it's Robinson, but now that I didn't double check, you know, I don't want to mess it up. But Let's say knows what I'm talking about. She always be the first one to come in, be the first one to repost. She always doing everything she can in order to like push forward, especially in the black community. And we gotta think, stop thinking about black and we're not gonna acknowledge black history month. So y'all let me know what y'all doing with black history month, man. Y'all gonna be like, who cooking out? I mean, is that stereotyping? That's probably stereotyping. I'm not gonna say that. Tell me who who's starting a business, who's like growing the company. I mean, in a different way. Who's bringing together like the the masses? Shout out to Shanquetta. She always bringing the masses that together. She's doing something special, with, like I said, with the women of Jonesboro entrepreneurs. You know, creating a space for them. Shout out to her. Who else I want to shout out? Oh, man, I got a whole minute. I want to shout out a couple more people if I can think of them. Man, shout out to. Uh, I can't shout out again enough. It's one thing about like when you the man behind the. The, the camera, you know, he you know he comes on on sometimes a community conversation, but like legit, man, he's really out here doing his thing. You know, we had the Martin Luther King MLK march not too long ago, and he was out there. He's not one of the people that's behind the camera. He's also like still a foot soldier through and through. So, man, shout out to him again. Shout out to who else I want to shout out. Man, this is an opportunity. I just want to shout out everybody. But I, now I'm just growing blank. As soon as I get off this mic, I'm going to be like, ah, I should have thought of somebody else. I could have did this and could have did that. Whatever, I only got like 30 seconds left, so I'm going to leave you my last shout out on my son again because that's what we do on Bias. Shout out to King Moody, the one and only, the baby goat man, like I always tell you son, be, you speak up for yourself, be confident. Today is your seventh birthday, so you know the seventh stand for God, and you just make sure you're doing what you got to do. In the meantime, oh, daddy love you. Daddy love you, King Moody. In the meantime, in between time, y'all know what it is, 102.5 KLEK FM, man. It's your boy, the kid, the kid, the boy. Walter D. Moody, also known as Moody, was here. And guess what? I was here. Y'all be good.